Hello everyone, it's Caitlin and today we're going to make several 1830s bonnet veils. Of course we'll be working out of the workwoman's guide today. So we're going to be working on page 84, which is where the veils are. And there's not much on the subject of veils. This section right here is all we have for veils in the entire book. Um, and there are no plates or figures. I suppose if they're just rectangles, you really don't need them. But it does say the subject of veils is one that may be soon dismissed as a few words on the materials of which they are composed together with the usual sizes comprises all that can be said upon them, which is why we have no plates. So the veils for ordinary wear may be the kind of soft tool made on purpose of net, gauze, or crepe. We're making gauze ones today. The size for a grown-up person is from 13 nails to a yard long and about 20 nails wide. For a child, 11 nails long and the width is determined by the width of that material. A crepe or gauze veil is simply hem hemmed around, hello Laura, and the hem being deeper at the bottom to give it a little weight. A ribbon is run in at the top. And that is basically what we're going to be doing today. There's other types of veils mentioned. Um, there's mentioned how to make a net or a tool veil, a demi wall, um, which seems to just be a smaller veil that's circular, writing veils, um, which we're going to make a demi wall and a writing veil at some other point. Just for today, we're going to make three regular veils. So I have some silk gauze from Dharma Trading. I go to Dharma for all of my silk and dyeing needs. This is essentially something what you want. I don't remember if this is your heavier weight or their thinner weight silk gauze. I really don't remember. One thing to note is that it does mention in the book about white veils, but veils in the period are really your, they're your 1830s version of sunglasses. So white does not really help keep the sun's glare off at all. So I don't usually suggest white veils. They do exist. If you're into that sort of thing, go for it. Um, just know you're not going to get a lot of sun protection from that. Darker colors are going to be way better um, functional veils than um, a lighter color. So we're going, to use, we're going to make a black one, a brown one, and a green veil, because all of those are mentioned, and I have seen originals. So, let's go ahead and work on that. So there's the black one. I also have it in white, because Dharma only sells it in black and white, their gauze. And then we're going to dye this. So I bought one yard of the black and two yards of the white. That should be plenty. I have a lovely collection of Dharma's acid dyes, which is what you use to dye silk. So I have some black here. I have sour apple, which is going to be our green color, and tobacco leaf, which is going to be our brown color. So I think it's time to measure out the silk. I'm really hoping that the silk um, rips because silk gauze is a nightmare to cut. I also have some very tiny silk ribbon. And this is what we're going to use to draw the um, veils around the face. I don't know if we have any other colors other than black, so we might have to use black for everything. I know I have some red and some blues. I wonder if I can dye some of these blues to that green color. At least get it closer. So let's try that. Here's some blue. Here's a lighter color. Let's try that one because that one might dye better. And here's some red that's all tangled up with all my other ribbons set might just make a pretty brown. I don't mind if it's darker than one I would than the fabric. That'll be fine. I just want it roughly the same color. So it states that a size for a grown-up person is from 13 nails to a yard long and about 20 nails wide. So 20 nails wide ends up being 45 inches. So if you buy the 44 inch silk gauze from Dharma, that's the length that's the width of your veil right there. And all you have to do since it's a selvage edge and it won't rot it won't Turn over, you could probably just leave it and it'll be fine. So all I need to do is hem the top and bottom. Since it says two and yard long, I can leave it just like this. It seems very long though. <laughs> do I really want a veil that long? Hmm. This is 13 nails. Let me pull out the calculator. It's 29 inches. Okay, so that's only gonna give me six inches off. So I'd rather take a six inch deep hem to make sure this is gonna stay down and not flutter around. So yeah, I think we're going to leave it exactly how it is. What I'm probably going to do for this one is leave it for right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut the other two and set one to dyeing and then we can work on this while that is dying. So let's look at this white stuff real quick. So I just have um, numbers here. I'm just going to make it 30 inches. We're going to make the green one and the brown one like this. So 
and there was rip. Any flame we use silk is gonna rip like this. And cotton too. So here's veil one and veil two. I think I'm gonna cut this because I want it extra long, so I might as well just 60 inches. Give or take, that should be plenty. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a dye pot and I'll bring the camera in with me and show you kind of how I do my dyeing. Alright, so this is just a metal pot that I use for my dyeing most often when I'm doing small batches like this. Um, this is not a pan I use for food afterwards. So this is an older pan. Um, you, can, you can buy one at Goodwill. Just know that it's just going to be a dyeing pan, so I make sure it looks totally different from all the other pans in my kitchen. So I never use it for food. So we're going to fill this with water. And we're going to put this to boil. I'm going to take a little bit of the water, put it in the microwave to get this boiling really fast. So I just pulled this out of the microwave. It is piping hot. And so we're going to go ahead and add our dye to this. Uh, theoretically, you really should be adding the hot water to the dye. And then I have the dye in this one. Um, there is... <laughs> There is math involved in figuring out exactly how much dye you need. I don't bother. I just put in excess and then waste dye, basically. So, in theory, this is what the dye looks like in the container. In theory, if you do the math right, there, I believe to get the co most colors in the Dharma's acid dyes, you use 1% of the weight, 1 to 2% of the weight of the fabric in dye. So, if you're dyeing 100 pounds of silk, then you're going to need one pound of dye, basically or two pounds of dye. If you have excess dye, it's just doing nothing but wasting dye. If you do it properly, you'll do something called exhausting the dye, which means in your dye bath, the water will be clear and all the dye on the fabric. If you get too much dye, the water won't go clear, which is fine, you're just wasting dye. Um, and that's what I usually tend to do. If you don't add enough dye, then the water will exhaust, however, the fabric might be blotchy or it may not be the shade you wanted it to be. So I have this and I'm just going to let it sit for a while. I just use paint sticks or these are giant craft sticks. I kind of do all my dyeing stuff because again I'm not going to use any of this for cooking. I'm just going to make sure that it's completely all... There are no lumps because that can cause spots on your fabric. So this is getting close to boiling. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And there's our dye bath. I'm going to wait for that to get a little warmer. And once it gets a little bit warmer, I'm going to go ahead and add the fabric. You're going to add the fabric wet. So I'm going to add the ribbon first. I'm just going to dunk it in there. Do be careful when you're um, working with wet silk if it doesn't get wet in all places. Like sometimes you'll wring it out, wring it out, but they'll, in the very center there will just be a dry spot that will dye differently. Be careful with your silk when it's wet because silk is very fragile when it's wet. It'll set um, wrinkles in it like nobody's business. Just kind of like how your hair is very um, fragile whenever it's wet when you're in the shower. Silk is a protein fiber just like human hair, so you want to be very gentle with it when it's wet. Your dye pot should be theoretically large enough for the, to let the fabric swim freely without all these lumps and such, but I didn't realize how much fabric I had, and that's okay. It'll still dye fine. Just knowing, just know that you're supposed to do make it in a bigger pot. I'm gonna let this set um, for a while. I don't really care if it gets super dark. The dye will just get to a certain point where it just won't be can't getting darker. So after a while, we're gonna come in and add a little bit of acid. Uh, Dharma does sell some, I think it's citric acid, on their website. I just use vinegar. They say vinegar is cheaper. It's a helpful thing that I have all the time, and. Uh, it only kind of smells like vinegar for a little bit, and then the smell goes away. Okay, it's going pretty good now. You're dyeing your own fabric. Do try to keep those air bubbles off, um, just because it means that the fabric's not immersed in the dye. And then constantly pick it up and like redistribute the folds, if you have folds in there. Um, because anything that's inside a fold is going to get dyed differently than the outside fabric. I added the vinegar, maybe, maybe a quarter of a cup for what I have here. And then added more water because I was boiling all my water off. The vinegar does help set the dye because this is an acid dye. 
Um, Dharma's acid dies. Um, a lot of people say acid dye and they get kind of freaked out because you think it's some sort of weird chemical. Um, well, everything's chemical, so it's it's not dangerous. It's acid dye because you set the dye with an acid. Vinegar is an acid. So, we are setting the dye. It's much darker. I think I might leave it in here for two or three more minutes and then pull it out. What I'm going to do is dump all that out. Ring out the silk quite a bit because you can see I clearly did not exhaust the dye. I had far too much dye, which is what I was expecting. Alright, the green's only been going for about five minutes, um, but it is quite dark, and so I went ahead and added the vinegar. I might give it about five more minutes, and then take it off. Now, of course it's wet, so it's going to be a lot darker than it would be when it's dried, but I also want this to kind of be a lighter veil, so I don't want it to get terribly, terribly dark. I might take out one of the ribbons, um, and just see how that turned out, and then if I want to return it to the dye pot to get a little darker, I can do that then. Okay, so it's been like one minute. So I went ahead and found this little scrap of ribbon that I was dying to see if this is the color I wanted for the wool traveling dress that we've talked about before. Um, and you see it's very bright. I don't think this is the shade for this particular dress. However, I think this is the shade for the um, veil. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the heat. Alright, we are not done dyeing. So the gauze when I ironed it turned out so bright green that I know it was a shade ex that existed in the 1830s and I was seeing silks that color, <clears throat> but it's definitely not the color I want. Um, and then when I put it over my head, it's not very pleasant to look through. It is that bright. So what I'm going to try to do is I have some brown, dark brown rip dye, and I'm going to try to over dye it a bit and see if we can get some brownish so that maybe it will tone it down a bit. I got nothing to lose. Okay. You do need quite a bit more of rip dye than you do of other dye because rip is an all purpose dye, meaning that it dyes cotton, wool, nylon, silk, and everything else. It will dye any type of fiber, basically, that is dyeable. So, you cannot dye cotton and linen with the same, which are plant-based fibers, with the same dye that you're um, dyeing protein-based or uh, man-made uh, synthetic-based fibers. They all require different dyes. This has all the dyes in one container, so it will dye anything, but it means that you're never going to exhaust the dye because if you're dyeing silk like I am, you're not going to use up the protein dyes. Uh, uh, sorry, you're not going to use up the plant-based dyes or the synthetic-based dyes. Okay, so it's not green, um, and I'm not really liking the color. So actually, the ribbons turned out much prettier. I would have liked it if it was this moss green. It's not showing up on the screen, but it's this really pretty dark moss green, um, and this is brown. But I already have a brown, so I think I'm going to need to do is save this stuff. Um, I have plans for a writing veil. And a couple of demi voiles. So maybe I'll dye over dye this with black. We'll just make it black and do that type of veil. So we're gonna end up with two veils today, not three. So I have the black and its ribbon, and here's the pretty brown and its ribbon. Turned out very lovely. It's more of a coppery brown, which I actually quite like. And the over dyed ribbon that was red turned out a beautiful shade. I might have to go ahead and dye the rest of that ribbon that same color because I really like that. I had no idea what I would use it for, but it's really pretty. So I think I'm going to do, it doesn't say how big to make your hem, it just says a deep hem. So on this side, that's going to have the ribbon drawn through, I'm just going to fold it over the tiniest bit, and then maybe, maybe like that, maybe three-eighths of an inch. 
That way it gives me a little bit of a seam line and I can still run the quarter inch ribbon through it. And on the other side, I'm thinking half an inch, maybe a nail, maybe two, maybe half a nail. I don't know, I shall play with it and get back to you. Okay, so on the black one, I end up hemming it just over a nail deep, which is like a nail 2.25 inches. So it's two and a half inches. And I'm just going to run a simple running stitch all the way across to hem it up. simple running stitch all the way across to hem it up. two ways on on engravings. I've seen them up here and I've also seen them down here. And I wonder if it just depends on how long the veil is. I'm going to pin it in for now. I would usually tuck the ribbons at this point, but I don't think I'm going to bother today. Ah. Okay. And yeah, so it definitely covers the face. Y'all can see that. Where it ends. It's a lot more full on the sides. I think it almost would have been better if you had taken up that a bit so it was even. But. I'm happy with that. Let's look at the black one, which is much longer.
that one covers a good bit more. That one's quite a bit longer. But yeah, it's thinner as well. I think the dyeing kind of shrunk the other one. But I am very happy with them. I think they turned out well. And I think that'll be very nice at a warm, sunny events to get me some shade. So yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.